Hello there, my name is Mark Barnabas, your data protection pal. I am also the creator of the Data Heist game, a first ever learning resource for cyber hygiene. And today I'm going to share with you a free resource created by CSA, the Cyber Security Agency of Singapore. So right now I'm going to bring you to their website and take a quiz. So this is found on this particular website here, csa.gov.sg slash programs slash sg dash cyber dash safe dash seniors slash quiz. Mind you, this quiz is not just for seniors. I urge everybody to take this quiz. And if you're not familiar with some of the terms, do learn these terms because they will help you raise your awareness on cyber hygiene and to, be remain, to remain safe online. All right, so let's try this quiz. And I'll just cover five of the 10 questions here. So uh, just click here to start the quiz and you'll be directed to this site over here where there'll be 10 questions. So ready or not, let's go. So let me make it big, okay, so that you can see better. Okay, so it's really, really big now. Whoops, I'm sorry for that click. So first question, you receive a message from the bank asking you to click on the URL to provide your internet banking ID, password, and one-time password OTP as they detected a suspicious activity in your account. Otherwise, it will close your bank accounts immediately. What should you do? Now, this is a very common attack done by social engineers who would call you on your phone because they may have gotten your number from somewhere, whether from some random list or they have bought it or stolen it from somewhere, and they will call you asking you for your passwords. And you know, this is a very common attack made by scammers. So if you are not so sure whether the bank is really calling you, please, please do not give any passwords, do not give any login, do not give anybody any information if you are not sure who they are. So the correct answer here should be to ignore the message, put them aside because you do not know who are they. If you are still concerned, go straight to the bank and verify and check if it is true, right? Nothing beats to verify the source. So first question, ignore. Second question, what should you do if you think you may have fallen for a phishing scam? What is phishing? Phishing, not the kind of fish, okay, that you get, you know, the fish thing. Phishing is where uh, cyber hackers or what we try, threat actors would attempt to steal data from you using many methods. So if you think you have uh, unfortunately or carelessly given up your data to somebody, what should you do? Uh, first option, change your password immediately, including all other accounts using this password. Sometimes we use the same password for more than one account, right? So that is definitely something we should do. Whoops, 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 whoops what happened? Okay, number two. Alert your bank if you have reviewed your credit card details. Yes, if you feel your credit card number has been compromised, quickly tell your bank and cancel the credit card. So that's the second thing you must do as well. Monitor your account for unauthorized withdrawals or purchases. Yes, certainly also keep checking your bank account. I was a victim of a, of a little, I wouldn't call it a scam, but somebody probably have my credit card number and I was charged $1,800 uh, just around the Chinese New Year period. And good thing the bank picked up an uh, unnatural purchase because it happened at 2.30 a.m. and the amount was fairly large. The bank called me and inform me about it. So, but what if there are some, what if the bank, what if the, the hacker rather uh, charge a small amount, like uh, $180 or $1.80, it may be mistaken for some bus trip, you know, or, or some small purchase. So in that situation, the bank may not call. So it's very important that you monitor your transactions and make sure they are legitimate and not made by a third party. Uh, and, and then you pay for it, right? Uh, next thing, of course, to make a post report if any funds are missing. So fortunately for my case, the bank called me, but if you have funds that are gone, make a police report immediately. So in this question, what do you think you should do? What should you do if you think you have fallen for a phishing scam? Do all of the above. That is the right answer. All right, question three. Which of the following is a strong password? <laughs> this is pretty easy, isn't it? I had Kaya Toast at 8 a.m. exclamation mark. That is a very good password compared to password one, two, three. In fact, 
password is the most commonly hacked password. So many times people are get lazy, they don't change the password, they leave it as this, and hackers will use this as a, as a weakness and attack accounts. And hackers don't just use one password, they have a what we call a dictionary of passwords and they go and use robots. They don't, they don't hack accounts one by one. They use like a robot to, to load passwords in, you know, and, and somehow if the robot is good enough uh, and have enough tries, the password can be broken. So a good way to have password is to have something like this, small letters, capital letters, symbols, as numbers, and yeah, so and it's fairly long, not it's more than 12 characters. So that's a good password. So that's a good practice for you. But you know, I do I do understand that you know it's really hard to have uh, many passwords because we have so many different logins to worry about. All right, so that is uh, a good password. Let's do one more question. Let's just do four questions. The video is quite long. So two-factor authentication 2FA is only available for bank accounts. Is that true or false? The answer is false. Many functions, I mean, that we perform today on the internet have two-factor authentication. Even for my Facebook account, you can put a two-factor authentication. So they are very, they are good. do your best to put in two FAs if you can, because that's a very good way of securing your account. So sometimes they may have triple factor authentications nowadays, or better still, they have like, I don't know, biometric or even facial recognition ones. So please do your best to put two FAs, especially if they are financially related accounts, like your bank accounts, um, important email accounts, or for those of you who are involved in cryptocurrency, your cryptocurrency accounts if you have online wallets. Of course, for many of those who are in cryptocurrency, the best is still a hard wallet. So find out more for your friends who are in cryptocurrency as well. So with that, let's just end this video here with four questions on how to be good, how to have good cyber hygiene and to protect your data. So continue the next video. The next video should be here somewhere. So remember, stay safe and Take care of your personal data. Take care and be safe. Goodbye. And remember to like, share, and subscribe. Bye.